pitch well, um, got behind, gave up some three-run innings and things, and um, got close from time to time with runners, but just didn't get runners driven in. So it was a tough Tuesday and Wednesday. From there, we went into Friday. Um, you know, they, they, they got us early with a couple. We got one or two back. And then we we mismanaged an inning that we, we should have taken care of. Um, we we um, let the the eight hole hitter get on. We had him one two and we hit him nine hole. Was trying to bunt. We walked him, and then you know we pitched to one of the best hitters in the conference with with runners um, everywhere. So that's not the way you really want to manage that inning. And from there we we we, we tried to fight back but uh, never could do any damage, had, had some runners from time to time. And then, of course, they made another push in the ninth. And so we went to bed and woke up the next day and said we were going to try to, you know, take Wilson out of the out of the equation. Um, so we started intentionally walking him. Um, Brandon gave up four in an inning, but they got it off one really base hit that sliced down the right field line that shouldn't do a three run inning. Um, but it was the walk, two walks and the hit batter that, that really did the damage before the hit. And so I thought Brandon did a great job of recalibrating and, and going back out there. Like I told him, you know, you're beating them with your fastball. You just, they, they got one hit on you. It did damage because of the two walks and the hit batter. And so he went out and shut the faucet off and, and then the bullpen shut the faucet off and the hitters, came back through the middle innings and were able to take that game and then come back on Sunday and get a great start by Jack. And um, Schultz came in um, with the wind blowing out. Jack's fastball was turning down, not sideways. It's been doing that now for the last two and a half, three weeks. And that's why all of his starts have been really good. And then Schultz leads the team in 50 ground ball outs uh, with that sinker. So we wanted him to come in behind him to try to keep the ball down because of the wind had changed from Saturday to Sunday. And so all the pitchers did a good job. Gunner closed out on Saturday. So, um, you know, the, the, the toughest part about it is that's kind of the way we wanted to start this season, you know, with Gunner on Friday night and Brandon on Saturday and Jack on Sunday with a good bullpen. And, you know, we started this season out and, and hadn't been able to get Gunner where we really wanted him. And Brandon couldn't get him where we wanted him, couldn't get Jack where we wanted him. And finally, things are kind of settling a little bit with the pitchers. Um, Gunner did a, a six-out save this week. He wants to do a nine-out save next week and continue to build his pitch count up to come back and start. So hopefully we can not run out of time and get Gunner back to Friday and Brandon on Saturday and Jack Burke on Sunday all up and running. Um, that was our goal from opening day, but Brandon's feeling better now, throwing uh, really well. Jack's throwing really well. And Jack had to overcome a lot with being out for five days with the with the flu or the food poison or whatever he had. I don't even think he bullpened. So, um, so that was a good job by Jack. Armstrong was the same thing. He came in and threw two quality innings for us. Um, I like throwing Armstrong behind Brandon. Brandon raises their eyes, and then uh, Armstrong comes in down below it. So he threw two scoreless innings for us, which gave us to Gunner, uh, Gunner's six outs. Because once you get Gunner up, you really have to use him. He, he's not uh, yet in a position as a closer to where you could, you know, get him up and make him throw a lot of pitches and then throw again the next day. He's got to come out and get his work in. So uh, Armstrong's two innings were very, very valuable because it allowed Gunner to stay on line. So. Uh, we got those two out of three, which is good. Hated to let the two in the middle of the week go, but, uh, you know, the guys did a good job of getting beyond that and playing better baseball on the weekend. Now we've got a day off today. We'll head to New Orleans for LSU on Tuesday and then get on the bus Wednesday morning and head out and uh, play UTA, who's been playing really well. Um, one good thing is we played well on the road early. We, we've swung the bat good on the road and scored runs on the road. So um, I feel good about that. Uh, early in the year, we didn't pitch well on the road after the seventh inning. But now with the, with the rotation getting a little bit more settled and guys are eating up five and six innings in their starts, I think that's real good for us. I think that's going to be the difference maker for us this time heading out on the road that we've got Lamont now. We've got Gunner. you got Armstrong. I mean, um, you've got Schultz. You've got a lot better bullpen now from the 7th, 8th, and ninth. Coach, is one thing to 
say you just go to the next day. I know you got to have a next day mentality, but y'all had so many next days. Well, the, the biggest thing is, is we just we just keep trying to 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 talk to them, you know, about how how this game is. It's a tough game. Um, you 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 you've been put in a unique position uh, with a lot of holes with injuries that um, you know you 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 start the season with 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 everybody healthy and uh, you all American on Friday night with Gunner, and then Saturday you got Brandon up and running and Burke running the way it is. We're not you know, pulling at all these pieces, you know. So you, you, you try to get them to understand that. You try to get them to understand that everybody runs into trouble. I mean, you know, the Boston Red Sox started, what, two and eight or something. I mean, you, you, you try to show them other situations uh, out there in baseball. You look at Chris Davis. I think he went, what, 0 for 40 six or whatever to break a record or whatever um, and that's a big league. You're getting paid a lot of money, you know. Um, it's baseball. Um, what you got to do is you can't let baseball break you because it can break your will um, over time. And the one thing we're trying to get them to do is just stay the course. We got a lot of parity in the conference this year, which is good. You know, not many people are just running away with it. Uh, everybody's kind of all bunched up. That's good for us. Um, we, 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 we try to get them to understand that we're slowly, you know, getting better, that the bad first half led to a lot of freshman pitching. So it gave them some experience. Even though they got beat on, it's given some experience. It's weathered them a little bit. Now things are reversing back out to where we're almost lining back up to what we wanted to be opening day with Gunner, hopefully eventually coming back to being Gunner as a starter. And then you've got Brandon now throwing the way we thought he could throw. And then you got Jack throwing the way we know he can throw. If we can sustain that, the pin's better now, uh, set up that away. If we just, you know, continue swinging the bat, we did pick up Danny. Um, we're not going to pick up the other guys, but we picked up Danny. So we just we just try to give them a lot of analogies, you know, of of uh, showing them real life circumstances, trying to get them to understand that if you, if you go to the bookstore and buy a you know a, a self help book, um, the only reason there's a story is because of some type of tragedy that occurred, right? For the guy to be able to have a story. Um, <clears throat> if you look at the book, The Road Less Traveled, I mean, the first line in it is life's going to be hard. I mean, think about it. It's a self-help book, but they pop you right off the bat with life's going to be hard. And and so we also try to tell them, you know, there's a book out there called The Obstacle uh, Is The Way. It's not in my way. And, and it's just nothing's ever good or bad. You, you, it's how you see it, uh, which determines your energy level, your attitude. I said, so what if everybody sees it as bad? But let them. It's, it's what you see it as. And then we try to drive everything back to real life experiences that when they leave here, they're going to get caught in life and life's going to beat you down. I mean, uh, it's going to want to break your will. Um, and, and so we, we try to keep the life stuff attached to it so that if they can fight now, um, you know, I tell them their next fight, I mean, their child could have leukemia. I mean, you don't, you don't know what the next fight is. You know, I have a, a, a good friend that if I'm going to the, to the wake today that, you know, he, he passed away at MD Anderson with leukemia. I graduated with his wife and, and I mean, things, things can hit you, man. So we, we just try to keep a lot of, a lot of um, life experiences connected to it and getting them to try to continue to fight and not say, you know what, well, we tried. We know everybody's disappointed in us. We're not living at the standard that we want to, so we're just going to go ahead and, you know, pack our stuff and go away. And I don't think you can do that, you know. I mean, I don't care if you're down to your last dollar, man. God's not finished using you yet. I don't care if you're down to your last eye, your last arm, your last egg, leg. I mean, God's not finished using you yet. And and so you you we, we try to get them to understand that, hey, maybe you'll be part of a story. But the only way that they're going to write a story about you is you're going to have to have some pain and heartache and tragedy at first. You did. Now, what are you going to do with it? Because, see, the rest of the story can't be written because you go to the bookstore and you pick up a self-help book and it says, I quit after I, I hit trouble. You're going to put the book back. 
I mean, you're just going to. And you're not going to take a book out of the self-help section that says, I was given everything in life. I was born with a silver spoon in my mouth. I never had trouble. I never had adversity. You're going to put that book back on the shelf too because it doesn't mimic your life. The reason you're reaching for that self-help book because you're probably in some trouble. And what you want to do is you want to see that there's hope. So what do you do? You lean on people that have gone through tragedy and trouble, you know. And um, there's a guy you know, in Karen Crow that opened up that gym. I mean, look at his story. You know, his mom put him in a trash bag with his brother and threw him in the dumpster. And, you know, the guy's a successful businessman today, married Miss Louisiana. I don't know if he'd have thought about that when they threw him in the dumpster. But but you do have value. You know, I tell him all the time, it's like a $100 bill. You can take it to a, um, a homeless guy underneath Interstate 10 and you can crumple it up and ask him if he wants it. He's going to say yes. I mean, you can stomp on it and ask him if he wants it. He's going to take it. You can tear it in half and ask him if he wants it. He's still going to take it because the, the $100 bill never loses its value, right? No matter what you do to it. Well, we've been kicked up, kicked. We've been stomped. I mean, we, we've been we've been crushed. Um, but you got to get them to understand that they don't lose value because that's what happens to us in our personal life, right? When we start to get uh, stepped on and, and, and punched, we, we start to believe that we lose value. And I'm no less valuable today than I was last night just because we, we had a bad week, right? But you can start to think like that because people will treat you like that. They'll look at you like that. And so we try to just keep keep them connected to make sure that they understand they like the hundred dollar bill, man. You're not you're not losing value just because of where you are. Um, and if you can keep them looking through those lenses, then you've got a chance. But if if they start to believe that they've lost value, um, that they're less valuable, then they'll start to lose their passion, their will to fight, and then it's it's, it's just over at that point, right? So we're just trying to keep it with them. I'm proud of them that the last, you know, I mean, they got beat down Tuesday. They got beat down Wednesday. They got beat down Friday night. Man, them suckers came back and made a decision to come back out. <clears throat> and we told them the story about life's not a boxing match. In a boxing match, the referee's going to save you. That's what his job is. He's going to save you from getting brain damage, bleeding to death, and sometimes maybe knocked out. Uh, and he's going to see when you've really been beat on the worst, he's going to stop the fight. But in life, man, we don't have no referee. I mean, what are we going to do? Wait around for the referee to come in and stop the beat down on us? I mean, sooner or later, man, you can't be waiting around for the referees not coming in, man, to save you. Uh, you you're going to get beat on. You might bleed to death. You might get knocked out. I mean, he's not coming to save you. You have to just keep swinging. Get back in the ring and keep swinging. And uh, you know what? Maybe you'll land a haymaker on him you know, and knock him out. You never know. But I know one thing to be 100% sure, like I told them, if you quit today, it is over. That's the one thing I can tell you. But if you just if you just look, you know, we try to give them so many examples, these country and western singers, man, that have gone to Nashville, and some of them, one of them, I forget his name, I can't, he's very famous, I, I can't remember him right now, but he, he, he gave away his guitar. I mean, that's all he had. He was out of money. He was out of everything. He even gave away his guitar to get some money. And 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 the guy is, makes multi-million dollars today. I mean, so so it doesn't matter what you get down to. What matters is that you just don't quit at the end of the day. Um, we showed him the story of the Olympian, the guy that, uh, I forget his name right now, but he you know trained for four years, man, and he blows his hamstring out, you know, when the race starts, and his dad comes running out of the stands to get him, and he looks up at his dad and his dad said, look, you know, you need to, you know, quit. He blew out his hamstring, could barely walk. And he said, no, dad, I can't. I got to finish. And so him and his dad crossed the finish line, you know, together in the Olympics. And today he finished last, but he's respected. Now think about that for a minute, right? He finished last. Usually if you finish last, I mean, you're a bum, right? If I finish last, I'm a bum. This is a tough business. But a guy in med school can finish last and they call him a doctor. I finish last. I'm called the bum. And so this is, this is a tough business. And so, but that guy finished. And so people show his highlights to people today, right? Think about that. When would you show highlights to somebody of a guy that finished last? But it's not the finishing he, last. It's he finished. And he, he didn't quit when he had the opportunity to quit. And so that's basically what we're trying to do. And uh, hopefully we can keep plowing forward because I think we got some good things lining up. The pitching staff starting to line up better. 
Uh, the bullpen starting to line up better. Hitting, we, we're starting to, to, to swing good in the middle innings. But when you're a team that scores in the middle innings, you've got to get off to good starts because you want them to be able to settle in. And um, and so I, I just I just think we do have some good things um, that that are working, uh, but we just can't quit. Well, it's it, that's a good point. We 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 you know. The realist in you ha has to, to look at certain things. I hate looking at that. But but the realist in me, you have to start looking at that. Um, so so I hate it because every game's important. Um, um, I, I've never, you know, really went into a game and said this game is not important. Um, but but the way we handle our pitching. Uh, the way we use somebody in a midweek game now is important because of the fact that the weekend is 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 what's going to get us where we need to get now. Not not really. The the thing that does change is. It gives us a chance to, to go and play a team that you normally see in a regional, like we did against Texas. Um, more and more people, believe it or not, are trying to come here and play us now because of a regional atmosphere on the road, you know, like the, the, the series we're working out with TCU. I mean, that's what they want to do. I mean, teams want Texas wanted to come here because they felt this is a regional atmosphere. And so that's a credit to our fans and a credit to our program. Uh, they know that they've got to try to, to be able to win on the road from time to time. So they're picking some venues that are tough to play in, to bring their players into. And so I respect that. Well, we do the same thing with LSU. It gives us the opportunity to play a team that's usually always national ranked and a team that's going to be at a regional and a team that possibly might host a regional. And so it gives our younger guys a chance to, to, to sense that, feel that, um, because you can talk about that till you blue in the face. Um, it's hard for me to invite 10,000 people to practice to put fresher, you know, on a, on a freshman pitcher. But by going there, I get that value. And then what I like going there for and playing against the Texases and those schools when we go in these tough venues from time to time is to learn to play against adrenaline. They're so good with adrenaline. Um, their fans adrenalize them, especially at the box. Um, and, and all those great teams, most of them have one thing in common. They can get adrenalized by their fans. And I've always said this, you know, um, you have a hitter on, on adrenaline, it's not good. I mean, because he can hit stuff that's unexplainable. You know, you throw a pitch on his shoestrings, he can hit it out of the ballpark. You throw it two inches off the plate, he hits it out of the ballpark. You bring him back the next day with nobody in the stands, you throw those same two pitches, he can't foul it off. The difference was he was on adrenaline. And so I like, I love going in places like that, man, because you got this adrenaline over here that's just waiting, you know, for nine innings, and you've got to hold it off. And, and man, I, I love when teams have the ability to go in and do that, you know, hold that adrenaline off. And you do that by not walking people, hitting people, making errors, getting off the field when you can get off the field, make the quality pitch when you need to make the quality pitch. When you get runners in scoring position, you know, do damage, keep, keep the adrenaline down. And, um, I mean, you've seen those stories, right? Guy changing the oil underneath his car and, you know, the – car falls on him and some kid lifts the car up and you know they, they try to bring the kid back the next day and lift the car and he can't budge it right but the guy was on adrenaline man I mean you can do a lot of things on adrenaline and um, uh, many times I remember playing coach Berkman's great teams we went in there and you know we left the next day in the paper he said yeah they came in here and got adrenalized sometimes your adrenaline you know you can 
adrenalize somebody else. And that's the that's the challenge of being a team that that lives with a high standard, just like us through the years of beating on people, that 58-win team, College World Series team. Nobody's going to feel sorry for you in our conference with some injuries and you don't have Gunner on Friday night. I mean, they're not going to feel sorry for you, man. It's a chance for them to go, you know what? I remember them beatdowns you gave me. I'm going to try to give you a beatdown. So, so – you know, sometimes you can get reverse adrenalized. Somebody else can come in your yard and get adrenalized because they're in your yard. So, again, that's why we go there. And then, of course, for the Wally Pontiff Classic, it's it's nice to always go there because you're raising money for, for the foundation. You're raising money so his son doesn't uh, – he has his – continues to keep his son's legacy. You know, I coached against Wally. Um, he was a great player. And then on the other side of it, I watched my mom and dad, you know, bury a child. We lost Jody, and um, that was the toughest eulogy I ever had to give because they couldn't give it. And so I watched my parents bury a child, and and it ain't good. And and for us to be able to go there, I know what that mother and father went through. And so it's good to know that we can go there and, raise the money for the for the foundation for them because they've tried other teams and the the attendance fell off and so by continuing to ask us we're honored it's a privilege to go there and keep keep that foundation going and keep the legacy of their son going Well, the, the the big thing is I think the bullpen and the bench is going to be okay and the hitters. I think the biggest challenge is we're, 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 we we kind of want to reroute our pitching, the rotation for the weekend. And and I couldn't do it this week uh, because Brandon needed all the rest he could get because of his labrum and everything. And then Jack went down sick on us. And so we had to back him up all the way to Sunday to try to get him through that sickness and the weakness of that sickness. And so it, it flip-flopped everything, lined it up the way it is. And then now with this moving up, I can't, I can't flip it yet. Um, it's one thing that we want to try to do. It's not that um, we, we were disappointed in, in Austin, I mean, or at all. It's just we kind of want to just flip it for the stuff everybody has. Um, but I, I couldn't do it this week and I can't do it this week. So that's the problem it poses. But by moving it up a, a, a day, it does allow me to flip it for the following weekend, which is what we're probably going to do. They are. They're really good. And, and uh, I, I know you focused on LSU too. You have your purple tie today. So uh, there you go, light purple. You sit – I understand. Uh, no, you, you bring up a good point. They're, they're really good. They're playing well. Um, and they got us on the road. So, so, um, but the, the saving grace, one game this week. Um, I, I do hate you're going to go into such an adrenalized situation and then into a ballpark that doesn't have a lot of adrenaline. I don't like that. Um, um, I tell our players all the time, if we could package up the way they feel when they go in to play a, a team like LSU, because they know a lot of their players, a lot of their players know us, and so they they get it. They get it's a different feeling for them, right? And um, one of them's wanting to carry the equipment now, and yet he never wanted to carry the equipment, but it's he's going to LSU. So it, things change when you go into there, and and hopefully the feeling we get into there Tuesday, hopefully we can try to bottle that up and learn how to play with that passion, that emotion, that adrenaline headed into the weekend. But uh, UTA is a good team. They're playing well. Um, but I think we're playing better. I know our record, uh, I told our team the other day, you're going to have to be an ugly fighter. I mean, you're going to have to be an ugly fighter. Uh, who cares? Um, it's not pretty. It's kind of like that Febreze commercial, you know. That guy says, you know, I love them, but sometimes they stink, right? So, so we we got to learn just to be an ugly fighter, and and get in there and just fight ugly and see where we end up. I don't know, or or even maybe Brandon, you know. We we'll see. Um, you know, again, it's not that we disappointed in Austin. It's just, you know, we, we, we'd like to try to match up the stuff a little better if we can. Um, 
but but we'll see. We'll, we got to get through this weekend starts again, and then we'll just relook at everything because we don't know when Gunner's going to be back up up to Friday. Definitely. Definitely. That's 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 what that's what his goal is. He's he's working up to go back to starting. 